This video presents the answers for the sentences on page 2.1. Of course, they're sentences which focus on the concepts of only if and also necessary and sufficient conditions. I intend for these sentences to illustrate all of the standard tricks that show up on tests and quizzes and things of that nature. And of course, I've got all the rules right down here. My experience is that when people struggle with these sentences, though they tell me they just find the entire thing just bewildering, typically when they struggle, they don't actually know these rules very well. So I think when you're doing symbolization with these new concepts, the thing is just to follow the rules and not to overthink. Okay, first sentence. The president can cut taxes and increase spending only if he uses magic. You know the th sad thing about this sentence is that it's about 10 years old, but it's still true. Um, anyway, uh, this is pretty easy. Cut taxes, increase spending, and our logical words, of course, are and and only if. So he can cut taxes and increase spending only if he uses magic, and T and S clearly going together in parentheses. Only if is going to be the main connective. The rule for only if says that whatever follows it is the consequent. That's the part that comes after the arrow. So this is just going to be T and S, arrow M. Whatever follows only if is the consequent. Very simple sentence. Now here's a point worth thinking about. If you try to read this back in standard if-then language, it's not going to make any sense. If you say, if he cuts taxes and increases spending, then he uses magic, there's a good chance that that's not going to click in your intuitions as meaning the same thing as the original only if sentence. Maybe it will, but most of the time it doesn't. We don't have good intuitions about the meaning of only if. Okay, next sentence. It's another only if. Only if they're worried about public relations will they buckle under and stick by their word. Can you hear that there is a pause right here? It's The sentence says only if they're worried about public relations. And then here's what's related to that, that they'll buckle under and stick by their word. Well, what's the rule for only if? What follows it is the consequent. Okay, so the only if is the main connective. R is following it, and then buckle under and stick by their word, that's the antecedent. So there's your symbolization. So here's the next two sentences. When searching the internet, googling only works if you can spell. Alright, so we know that when means if. Let's rewrite this. If you're searching the internet, I, comma, Googling only works if you can spell. Notice, here's the important thing about this sentence. Only works if. Well, that's actually just only if with a word stuck in between it. Now, I've invited you to make a distinction between if, then, and only if, and pointed out that you should think of if as its own word, and only if is just a completely different word. It just happens to have a space between the Y and the I. But then every once in a while we stick things between the Y and the I just to make it interesting. But notice this just means Googling works only if you can spell. So G only if S. Now here's a sentence where we have two synonyms for if, or two synonyms for the arrow, if and only if. Sometimes that's really complicated, but there's really no reason to overthink this. It's if I, comma. Well, there's a very strong argument then that this is just I arrow and then G only if S what follows only if is the consequent so we get G arrow S. I mean I would go straight to this and the most common mistakes is because people are thinking too much about it. Sometimes people ask me said hey I recognize that isn't this supposed to be equivalent to I and G arrow S? And the answer is yes it is this is also a correct answer. Notice, if you try to read this in English, it's going to sound terrible. It looks like it says, if you're searching the internet and you're Googling, then, or if you're 
Sorry, I should say this more carefully. If you're searching the internet and Googling works, then you can spell. It's not immediately clear to me that that means the same thing as the first sentence. As I keep saying, you have bad intuitions about only if. All right, sentence number four. Piracy could be eliminated if only the recording industry had enough lawyers to sue every music fan. Well, there's only two possibilities. This is a very simple sentence. Is it E or O S or is it S or E? And to answer that question, we have to ask about if only. We have if then and we have only if. Well, what about if only? Is that the same thing as only if? And the answer is it's not. In this case, the word only isn't doing logical work within our system. In this case, the only is calling attention to the uniqueness of the condition. This sentence is really saying, if there was just this one thing, that the recording industry had enough lawyers to sue every music fan, then piracy could be eliminated. So in other words, this is just a simple if, therefore the correct symbolization is SROE, and this one doesn't work. Sentences five and six. Sentence five is a very simple sentence. What's the main connective for this sentence? Although Janet will make strawberry jello whenever you ask, she'll make lime jello only if it's a special occasion. Well, although is the main connective for the sentence, and what does although mean? It's an ampersand, and it's working with the comma. Remember, there are four things. Although, though, even though, and while. They're synonyms for ampersand, but they tend to sit at the front of the sentence and work with a comma. Ampersand is the main connective is always good news because nothing ever needs to jump from one side to the other. So in front of this we have strawberry jello whenever you ask. Well whenever is just a synonym for if, so that's a arrow s. And obviously that needs to be in parentheses. So if you ask you get strawberry. But she'll make lime jello only if it's a special occasion. Yes, lime is a very important flavor of jello. So this is lime only if occasion. What follows only if is the consequent. So we get L -R O O. Very straightforward sentence. Number six, on the other hand, is actually kind of a weird sentence. In fact, I would call it an obnoxious sentence. It says, the commanding officer only offers me a root beer when there's a dangerous mission to be flown. Well, once again, there's, there's only two possibilities here, R-R-O-D or D-R-O-R. The truth is, I stole this sentence from the, uh, from the textbook that we're not using, and I stole it because it is an obnoxious sentence, and uh, every time people think about it, they get it wrong. What does this sentence mean? Does it mean that if he offers me a root beer, then there's a dangerous mission? Or does it mean if there's a dangerous mission, then there's a root beer? So it's an obvious voting situation. If you're voting for the first one, raise your hand. If you're voting for the second one, raise your hand. Nope, you're wrong. <laughs> I, m m maybe, almost always, almost always, people vote for the second one, but the first one is correct. Um, it, if you actually got that right, my apologies. Why am I saying that the second one is correct, incorrect, and the first one is correct? Well, let's look at what the sentence actually says. Here's an only, and there's a when over here. Only when is obviously a synonym for only if, and this sentence, the meaning of this sentence is really, I get a root beer only when there's a dangerous mission. And so that's R only when D. Therefore, this is the correct symbolization. Now, as I say, this is really obnoxious. To have an only when sentence and to put all those extra words between them and capitalize one of the words, I wouldn't do this on a test. That's why in the packet it's actually got a diamond in front of it. But, you know, this is an example of the flexibility and the confusion of English. Why is it that we have such lousy intuitions about this? Well, I think it's for the same reason that I pointed out when we talked about that Garfield comic strip on the board. When you say something like only when, quite often you're really thinking if 
and only if. And my guess, if you ask Snoopy what he meant by this sentence, he would have said, look, I actually meant the double arrow. I mean that root beer, if and only if, dangerous mission, that they always go together. But in response to Snoopy, you might say, hey, but that's not what you said. You said an only when sentence, and so that's just a single arrow. Even if you meant this, you said that. Anyway, uh, no reason to worry about number six. I, I just like to talk about it. Sentences seven and eight involve necessary and sufficient conditions. If we have seen every time that you write P arrow Q, you're expressing both a necessary and a sufficient condition. P is sufficient for Q, but Q is necessary for P. The rules for necessary and sufficient are not about position in the sentence. Notice this says for if then and for only if, it's just what follows if. And so it's very superficial for the first two rules. But for the second two rules, it's what is sufficient and what is necessary. So let's look at number seven. That the transverse gradient of potential vorticity is of opposite sign in both layers is a necessary condition for baroclinic instability. Well, I'm sure you knew this. Um, how do we symbolize the sentence? Good thing we don't need to understand them, right? Uh, what the sentence really says is that G is necessary for I. G is necessary for I. Necessary condition is necessary for, it just means the same thing. G is necessary for I. Well, so what is, the rule says, what is necessary is the consequent. What am I identifying is necessary? G is necessary. Oh, so G is what's necessary, therefore the symbolization has to be I arrow G. G is necessary for I. The money is sufficient for this year, but adjustments are necessary for next year. Well, one comma and the but is clearly giving us the main connective here. Money is sufficient for this year. Money is sufficient. What is sufficient is the antecedent, so that's just M arrow T. Money is sufficient for this year. Adjustments are necessary for next year. Okay, what is necessary, and adjustments are necessary, is the consequent, so that means adjustments are necessary for next year in airway. And there it is. It's all about following the rules. Try not to overthink these sentences. Sentence number nine is slightly tricky. I oftentimes see people make mistakes with it. It says, essential for innovation and growth are the talent and creativity of our staff. Well, essential is a synonym for necessary. And so if I was going to write this, I might write necessary for I and G are. This necessary for R, in a sense, this is all part of the logical expression, that entire phrase. And so I, and I, I know this is a bit, seems a bit awkward until you see what's going on. But I would, if I was really going to write what's important, I would want to write necessary for I and G, R, T, and C. And then I'd put in some obvious parentheses, this and this. Okay, so I have a necessary condition sentence. What is necessary is the consequent. Necessary for I and G are T and C. Do you see that this says the same thing as T and C are necessary for I and G. The meaning of this sentence is that T and C are necessary for I and G. Talent and creativity are necessary for innovation and growth. So what is necessary is the T and C, so it should be the consequent, and the symbolization needs to go like this. The flexibility of English means that when you have the words necessary and sufficient, they can show up any place, and that's why you have to think about the meaning of a sentence like this and ask, what's necessary for what? Sentences 10 and 11 aren't really difficult, but there you might say there's sort of a slight trick to them. 10 says the only way to protect the environment is to develop new sources of energy. Well, 
there's not really any of these four synonyms obviously in the sentence. There is an only here, but there's no if to go with this only. The only way to protect the environment is to develop new sources of energy. Oftentimes, I, I've mentioned that we have terrible intuitions about only if, but we turn to, out to have very good intuitions about necessary conditions. If you can re restate a sentence as something is necessary for something else, you can usually figure out how to symbolize it using those words. So, what does this say as a necessary condition? It says that developing is necessary for protecting. Developing new sources of energy is necessary for protecting, therefore the sentence ought to be P arrow D. Developing is necessary for protecting. You can't do well on the tests without doing the homework. It's not at all obvious at first glance, but this also can be reread as a necessary condition. How might you say it? Does it mean that doing well is necessary for doing the homework? No, it means doing the homework is necessary for doing well. And so necessary conditions are always written backwards, and so H is necessary for W. Now, notice this sentence actually has some negations in it. That's the next thing that we'll be introducing. These things can't, that obviously means not. Without also has a not embedded in it. And it turns out an alternative way to symbolize the sentence would be if you, do, if you don't do the homework, then you won't do well. In fact, we'll introduce a, um, an equivalence that says any formula P or Q, you can switch the sides of the Q and the P as long as you change their values from positive to negative or vice versa. So, and notice that this makes really good sense when you think about necessary conditions. This says that Q is necessary for P. Well, so if you don't have Q, then you don't have P. But that's sort of a tangent. Correct answer, W arrow H. For number 10, it's P or D. Sentence, sentence number 12 is a long, ugly sentence. I know it gives people fits sometimes. I don't want you to have fits, so let's talk about a good way to approach it. Let's first of all rewrite it. Studying logic and mathematics, so that's just L and M, is required for. So I'm going to write is necessary for. When I have necessary and sufficient, I like to write the entire phrase is necessary for or is sufficient for because that's what my intuitions will work on. So, I'm sorry, M is necessary for G. I've got to erase that comma. I didn't mean to put that there yet. Go away, comma. Come back, pen. Okay, so L and M is necessary for G comma, only if manipulating symbols S is sufficient for H. There's the important stuff. L and M is necessary for G only if S is sufficient for H. Oftentimes with a sentence like this it's nice to put in some parentheses and see the obvious groupings. L and M clearly goes together. L and M is necessary for G only if S is sufficient for H. Are there other obvious groupings? Well, it turns out that sufficient and necessary conditions, in l when they are embedded in longer sentences, they virtually always give you groupings. S is sufficient for H goes in parentheses. But so does L and M is necessary for G. L and M is necessary for G only if S is sufficient for H. If we get all these sets of parentheses in here, the rest of it is just following the rules. Notice, what has to be the main connective? It's got to be the only if, because that's the only thing that's outside parentheses. Of course, it's also with the comma, so that reinforces the belief that, yes, that only if has got to be the main connective, and it's an arrow. 
Well, rule for only if. What follows it is the consequent. The value of the parentheses is that that shows us that what's following only if is this entire expression. So that's the consequent of the sentence. It's going to go there. S is sufficient for H. What is sufficient is the antecedent. S is sufficient. Oh, okay, so it's just S arrow H on the back side. That's easy. All the rest of this is the antecedent of the entire formula. And it says L and M is necessary for G. What is necessary is the consequent. L and M is necessary. So in here we have G arrow L ampersand M. And there we go. There's nothing that's really interesting that's logically equivalent to this. If you're going to symbolize this sentence, this is what you really need to have. And doing this is really about breaking it down into chunks and applying the rules. Now here's a bit of bad news. If you try to read this back in standard if-then language, it's going to seem like a nonsensical mess. It, it just is. If you're going to read it back to yourself, well then you've got to say, well, that arrow is only if. This one over here is a sufficient condition. This one over here is a necessary condition. And so what it says is G is necessary for L and M only if S is sufficient for H. But in standard if-then language, it would not sound very good at all. Sentence 13 is the last sentence. Hip, hip, hooray. I'm going to start by rewriting it. It says only provided that. Well, that's just a fancy only if. Only if J is essential for, well, essential is a synonym for necessary. So J is necessary for M. And translucence is sufficient for truth. So that's and T is sufficient for R. Hmm. In the packet, the R is underlined. For some reason it doesn't seem to have come out here, but uh, that R should have been underlined. Comma, does eating jello lead to philosophical insight? So in the end here we've got E leads to, yes I'm going to sneak it in here, E leads to P. There we go. Only if J is necessary for M and T is sufficient for R, E leads to P. Are there any obvious groupings? Well, necessary and sufficient conditions virtually always give us obvious groupings in longer sentences. So let's start by putting those parentheses. J is necessary for M, T is sufficient for R. Truth is, leads to, brings about, results in, those oftentimes give groupings as well, so we can get one more set in there. So, only if J is necessary for M and T is sufficient for R, E leads to P. At this point, we have an AND and an ONLY IF outside parentheses. Which one of these two things is the main connective? Oftentimes, the word AND wants to be a main connective and breaks things apart. But if we make this AND the main connective, that would put a hard break right here, and it would say that what's in front is independent from what's after. Let's read the sentence and see if that makes sense. Does the sentence say, only if jiggliness is essential for meaning, and then give you another complete idea? No. I, I hope, you know, the way that I read that, only if jiggliness is essential for meaning, it's obvious that something else has to be attached to this. That's not a complete thought by itself. This only if is suggesting it's related to other things, so the and is not the main connective. In fact, the only if is the main connective. And we actually need another set of parentheses that groups this whole thing. It's only if all of this stuff, comma, E leads to P. The only if is actually working with the comma, the second comma. Only if all this stuff, you get the other stuff. Okay, only if is the main connective. Now that we have all the parentheses in here, only if is the only thing that's outside the parentheses. 
So only if is the main connective. What follows only if, we look at the rule, is the consequent. What's following only if? All that stuff. Okay, so that is the consequent for the whole sentence. Now its main connective is an ampersand. J is necessary for M. What is necessary is the consequent. So that means we're going to have M arrow J. J is necessary for M. And T is sufficient for R. Well, what is sufficient is the antecedent. So that means just T arrow R. And now what about the E leads to P? That comes up in the front. E arrow P. And that's what we get. Once again, if you read this back in standard if-then form, it's not going to make too much sense. But this is an only if, and this is leads to, that's necessary, that's sufficient. So the sentence really says, E leads to P only if J is necessary for M and T is sufficient for R. I don't think this is trivial, um, but the trick is to break it down into individual pieces and then apply the rules. Good luck!